Greetings, Lojban friends. Uh, in the last video, I translated the second sentence of The Hobbit, and I went ahead and opened myself up to some creative criticism. And I'm glad to say that I learned a lot, uh, and I got some really useful uh, advice. Uh, first of all, in the comments, and second of all, in the Lojban chat. So I just wanted to go over that uh, because I think there are a lot of uh, good points and, and good alternative translations. Uh, so the first point uh, was made by commenter Microkernel, who says that there is a nice word called banzu, uh, which means that x1 is sufficient for the purpose of x2. Um, and it sort of captures a little better the meaning of the English. Uh, English, it basically says nothing in it to sit down on. My translation was zero things with the purpose of for sitting upon. Um, but by using banzu instead of sekosmu, you would get zero objects sufficient for sitting on. So in other words, there literally is nothing to sit on or there literally is not nothing to sit on. Uh, like a chair would have purpose sitting on, but a rock would not. Um, but a rock is certainly sufficient for sitting on. So banzu is actually uh, quite a nice uh, usage instead of sekosmu. Um, let's see, Ace Gravity uh, commented uh, with a few points. Um, one of them was using the word klahu, uh, klahu, if we look that up, it means uh, x1 is without x2. Um, and I was using uh, not containing zero things. So, of course, that double negative is always going to be confusing. Uh, not klahu would mean not without things. So not, well, of course, there is kind of a double negative in there, but it, it makes a little more sense than saying not containing zero. Um, not without, and then lo banzu belo nuzutse, not without things sufficient for sitting on. So uh, that was also a nice word to find. Um, Ace Gravity also translated the last sentence, it was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort, in a really nice, concise fashion, which I like. And it goes, ka rider hobi kevna tefihe lo nu kufna. Um, so ka, it, rider hobi kevna, was a hobbit hole. Tefihe is a modal tag. It comes from tefinti. Uh, finti means that x1 creates object x2 for purpose f x3. Te takes that x3 position and puts it into the x1 position. So te finti would mean x1 is an object made for purpose x2. So te fihi is a modal tag meaning made for purpose whatever. And in this case, it's this uh, lonu kufna, which is basically an infinitive meaning to comfort or for comforting. So in short, it was a hobbit hole made for comfort which I really like. It's very nice and uh, a lot less wordy than my uh, awful translation. <laughs> uh, he also points out that there really is no need for shu um, whenever you use ka, and the reason is that ka is actually a prosumpti, like me, like do. Um, so everywhere that I use ka, it's just as if I used me, I don't have to use shu because there is no reason to, um, there is no way that ka could bleed into the celebrity of the sentence. So ka na rigni, ka na sudga, and so on. So um, that is definitely something that I would just do right away because that's, uh, that's very useful. Um, and then we had uh, Keldwick Cheldane um, responded with uh, their own complete translation. Um, and I'd like to go over some of the differences and interesting points of that translation. So the first thing that was translated was, in a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Now, I went through contortions in the very first video. 
uh, about how to say this. And the reason that I went through contortions is that I did not use the place markers, fa, fe, fi, fo, and fu. Uh, these are markers or tags that you can tag sumti with that basically mean this goes in the x1 position or this goes in the x2 position. So when you tag a sumpty with fa, what that basically means is it doesn't matter where the sumpty is, it's actually going to be in the x1 position. Fe would be it doesn't matter where the sumpty is, it's going to be in the x2 position. And because I avoided that, I was not able to move the sumpty around. So uh, in this case, well, niho is, is basically a paragraph separator, but fe lokevna belo tumsva, um, that means in the x2 position is going to be a hole, um, a hole in the ground. So uh, they use the, the be construction rather than the tanru that I use, tumsva kevna, which is fine. Shuhabju, uh, and then fa lo reader hobi. So basically what this means is um, um, you, you can't, by just reading this, you can't really say this means in a hole in the ground. You can only say a hole in the ground was indwelt um, by a hobbit. Uh, colloquially, in a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. So... It's not that it's not that I don't like the translation. I mean, I understand the translation, and it's probably um, it's probably idiomatic lojban to do this. Um, I just uh, obviously in English, um, I'm used to using prepositions uh, before uh, sumti essentially, and this to me doesn't have the preposition in it, so I'm not quite sure where the sentence is going. Now, to be fair. Latin is kind of the same way, right? Because you can reorder Latin based on uh, whether it's an accusative or a nominative and so on. Um, so sometimes you really do have to wait for the verb in order to fully translate the sentence. And that's perfectly valid. I'm just not used to it. You know, my first language is, in Eng is English and I've never really learned any second language. Or if, or, you know, e even if I tried, I always failed miserably. So... Anyway, um, the next part is the part where I really learned something interesting. So here's that fa again, right? So basically, we're talking about lekevna, the whole. Um, we're not talking about it yet, but what we're saying is na mabla, which means not... Um, did I use mabla? No, I didn't. So let's look up mabla. Mabla is accursed or deplorable um which is which is fine um it stinks it sucks um i i probably wouldn't use it but it's a reasonable word to use um it's deplorable so not a deplorable i guess that could be nasty in in the in the more human sense uh, you know if you're a nasty person it means you're kind of despicable and deplorable um, um i probably wouldn't apply it to a hole in the ground but that's okay let's go with it um so not a deplorable now here we're using je now i thought that je was just for tanru and it turns out, and this is mentioned nowhere in the complete Lojban language and nowhere that I can find, and yet the parser accepts this. Je is an afterthought for Brivla, not just for Tanru, but for Brivla themselves. So it's perfectly reasonable to say Namabla, Je Toljinsa, Je Shilmo, and now that's the entire Selbri. Fala Kevna. And Fala Kevna, of course, applies to the entire Selbri. And the entire Selbri is nasty and dirty and wet. So this is really nice. I used uh, Gihe, and then, of course, I had to repeat Na. Um, they used 
tol jinsa instead of tohe jinsa. Tol is a prefix that you can add to a word that basically is the same thing as tohe, meaning the polar opposite of. Um, so tol jinsa, uh, unclean. So that was nice. Um, so here's one other interesting thing that I've noticed, um, and I kind of agree with this. Um, I mentioned that we have je here. Now, je means and, so it means all of these things all together simultaneously. So we're saying that it's not a nasty, dirty, wet hole. Um, nasty and dirty and wet. Uh, whereas the na comes outside that. So again, you know, I made the point that if you have not A and B and C, well, that simply means not A or not B or not C. When apparently what I really wanted was not A or B. In other words, it's not any of these things, even uh, alone. So it's not just, you know, it's not even a nasty hole. It's not even a dirty hole. It's not even a wet hole. Um, and I think actually, now that I think of it, I think this is probably the better way of putting things because what Tolkien is doing here is uh, he's, he's drawing a contrast between two extremes. So the one extreme is a hole that is nasty, dirty, wet, filled with the end of worms, and an oozy smell, all of those together. And the other extreme is that it's a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. That's the other extreme. So he's basically saying it's neither this extreme nor that extreme. In other words, it's not anything in, in between. Um, and, and that's why probably je should go inside and na should go outside, whereas my translation had na for each one of these things, um, and then I anded them together. So I think that in the end, this is probably the better translation and probably the more true to uh, Tolkien's words. Okay, so let's move on to the second part, uh, ijenai, this means and not. Um, so remember that uh, ije basically is a breedy connector with and, and uh, in order to negate the second breedy, you just uh, suffix with nai, so ijenai, and not, ka, it, vasru, um, was filled, Los Pisa. Now let's see what Spisa is. Uh, spisa is a piece. So Spisa Belo Shurnu, pieces of worms, uh, which again is a reasonable uh, translation. I kind of like ends a little better because, you know, really what <laughs> Tolkien is talking about is the wiggly end of the worm sort of sticking out of the walls. Uh, pieces, not quite as endy, uh, but uh, that's okay, we can go with it. Um, Gihe, and, uh, der spescu uh, sepanchi, which is basically the same thing that I used. So now, ijenai, and not, uh, kuhi, so, um, ijenai and not kuhi, however, uh, so in contrast, right, and there's that yet. So, yet was nicely translated into kuhi. Um, ijenai kuhi basically means nor yet, uh, sudga, dry, je, and again, there's that brivla connector, jadashau. So, what's jadashau? Now, that would be the word for bear. And let's look up Jadashau. Plain. Sure. Um, that's, that's probably better than I had. Uh, bear, let's see, I translated it as, uh, where is it? Kunti. Uh, and what was Kunti again? Kunti, empty. Um, bear, I think bear probably, um, probably, um, sorry, Jadashai, plain. Uh, plain probably uh, gets more of the nuance of bear. Um, 
<laughs> as opposed to, you know, empty, completely empty, which doesn't really make any sense. So I like that. Uh, Shanri. Um, so Shanri. Shanri. Okay. I think this is supposed to say Shanra. Um, there's a rule about Gizmu that says that two Gizmu cannot be identical with the exception of the last vowel. So this was supposed to be Shanre. So uh, not Sandy. Gihe and Klahu. So there's Klahu again. Um, and without Tuha. So Tuha is an interesting schmavo. Um, it's something that I that I never really got into, and I don't really like to use that much. But uh, it has a great deal of of uses. Tuha is basically an abstraction, um, and it basically says it basically means something to do with, or something about, or you know, some kind of action to go along with. Um, so, for example, lose zutze. Now, if we look up zutze, which is the sitting thing, right? So, se zutze would basically mean a sitting surface. Okay? So, what this means is um, without something to do with sitting surfaces. Uh, Luhu is the terminator for that. And then e, of course, is the connector. And here we've got another tuhe, lose shitka, which would be, you know, nothing to do for with eating. Um, so without, um, again, it, it's, it's difficult for me to kind of understand the way this is being used. Um, we know what the translation is supposed to be. Um, nothing, uh, nothing to sit down upon. Uh, and basically what this means is nothing to do with si sitting surfaces um, and nothing to do with eating. Um, which, again, kind of, kind of goes along with the translation uh, in that you, know, you, you have no sitting surfaces and you and you are devoid of uh, things for eating. Um, it doesn't really specify anything about what those are. Um, again, I'm not really that used to using Tuha, so I can't really comment a great deal about that until I, you know, sort of understand more uses of it. Um, and then we have cut uh, reader hobby Kevna it was a hobbit hole Ije and lo duhu so what is duhu duhu is an abstractor and it basically means and that means that or and that means lo duhu gohi basically means gohi means the previous uh, breedy which is uh, the fact that it was a hobbit hole, shunibli, nibli, logically necessitates, in other words, it implies loka, the property of kufra, comfort. So what we're saying here is that um, it was a hobbit hole, and what that means, what that logically entails, is comfort. So that's a uh, that's a nice uh, a nice another nice compact way of uh, of putting it, um, but honestly, I think that this really is the winner <laughs> right here. I really like this uh, this way of putting it. So anyway, that's all I wanted to really uh, go into. Um, all the feedback that I got, it was really excellent. I learned a lot of new words, a lot of new idioms. Um, and I definitely have questions about Tuha. I really need to understand the usage of this more because I've seen it a lot of times in chat. Um, so anyway, I guess that's about it. Um, it, it seems like um, people do want me to continue um, with the third sentence. I have gotten a warning that the Tolkien estate is, is pretty rabid about protecting their copyright. 
uh, which means that for all I know this video is going to be taken down because it actually contains a few sentences out of The Hobbit. Um, I am not going to say anything about that because otherwise I will just get just completely apoplectic and incensed. So anyway, um, that's it, and I will see you on the next video.